Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to talk about speech understanding in quiet. Coming right up. We talked about the audiogram. If you don't know about that part, remember that little, you need to go watch this, and I'll have it in this uh, playlist. And it's, you want to look at explaining the audiogram. But now we're going to talk about speech understanding. Okay, now I'm not, not going to get into every little piece of this, this puzzle here, okay? But what we're going to do is kind of give you some basics in here. So we're looking at speech understanding in quiet. Now, what the heck am I talking about? Meaning quiet circumstances, we want to do it in a sound booth. Now, when we see people who don't do it in a sound booth, they're really not doing it correct. Now, there are times you can't do that in a sound booth. We have a guy named Steve who does our home call clinic, and he's got to go into people who can't get out of the bed. Totally fine. Okay, we have modified the, the testing a bit, a bit, but we know that we're not going to be <coughs> as clinically accurate, because, but we're pretty darn close. But it's what we have to do, okay? So we have the capability of going into the house. But if you're going to have your hearing evaluated, you want to have these big old nasty sound booths, okay? T to give you an example, they, they need to be around 28 to 33 decibels. We're now we're talking about decibel dB SPL. That's a super, super quiet one. If you walked into them, you'll feel like, there's no sound. The very first time I actually had a sound engineer, we're doing a commercial and he was like, can we just do it in, the, in there? And, and like, fine. And so he pumps the microphone, I'm in there talking, and he goes, this doesn't sound right. I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't sound right? He kept turning up the mic gain on there, and I'm like, what are you looking for? He goes, there's no background noise. And I'm like, this is a sound booth, dude. You're not supposed to hear background noise. Oh, he had never experienced it, okay? so. What we first start with is we start with a term called speech reception threshold. What I want to know first is what the lowest point that you can hear the speech and repeat it back to me, okay? So we want to come up with a low point <coughs> to know that answer. And let's just say it's 30 decibels HL, okay? So let's just say it's 30 on e <coughs> right and left. Now, that means that you have a need help type of hearing problem at least. Okay, then I want to run my evaluation at what's called 30 to 40 dB SL. What that means is I want to have it loud enough that you can hear it. So better be 30 to 40 decibels above that. So I'm gonna probably run that evaluation at 30 dB, or excuse me, 70 SHL. Now you're going, I don't know why, what you just said. I understand, I'm just giving the background to that. Don't worry too much about that part, okay? What I wanna share with you is that we're coming up with a percentage of understanding of the words, okay? Now, this isn't a percentage that you can go to the VA and get them to get you a percentage of hearing loss, okay? This is a percentage of words that you understand, and this is called, I like to look at this, this is the ceiling. This is your capability to understand the words. Now, I'm gonna use this as a perfect example is a friend of mine did an evaluation. So I'm gonna write it in three different colors here. 1998, Ivan, a friend of mine, <coughs> ran a, an evaluation of a guy, did a hearing test on him, and in his left ear, he got 84% of the words. In the right ear, he also got, <coughs> excuse me, 84%. Now, Ivan correctly put
put in hearing aids in both ears. Okay? Now, Ivan refers him over to me because I'm an audiologist, and he says, I don't get what's going on here. So in 2004, he comes back to, this guy comes over to my office, and he is now 40% <coughs> over here, and 84% over on this side. So he's had a, a massive drop in his understanding in a six year period of time. Now my first thought is he's got a stroke, he's got an X, and I'm doing, looking at all the medical kind of stuff. And I'm asking these questions, and I'm about ready to refer him for an MRI and a CT before I ask him this question. I said, but let me ask you another thing. Did you stop wearing your left hearing aid? He goes, yeah, how'd you know that? So what he did is he deprived his hearing in the left ear. It's called auditory deprivation. He deprived sounds to his ear. So his brain's going, I'm not listening anymore, whatever. And the right ear is the only thing that's picking it up. And because <coughs> his right ear is staying up there, because he wore something in his right side, the left side just said, I'm shutting down. It's like a type of atrophy. Here's exactly what happened. So he's sitting there, and I said, you know, I said, really? At, at this point, your left ear is functionally not going to understand much anyway. You might as well not wear hearing it, okay? Some people would disagree with me on that. It's not relevant on that point, but it's, he's not going to understand words well enough to make sense of it because he really wants to hear like he did in 1998, which is exactly what he tells me. And he is hard and strong on that one point. And I said, ain't happening. He walks away. He starts putting in his right and left hearing aid. I was like, well, you don't have to, but whatever. I didn't. I just let him do it. He comes back in a week, and his son is a lawyer. That's what he announces up front. We have this very high chair, and he sits up in the high chair, and he's looking down at me, kind of looking at him, kind of funny. I've, I've dealt with power people before. It's not a big issue. And um, he basically says, well, we're going to sue you because you damaged my dad's left ear. Wh what? Do you want truth or do you want the lie? I said, that's exactly how I say it to him. He goes, well, the truth. The truth is that you stopped wearing your hearing aids six years ago and you damaged your own ear. And the son wilts in his chair. He goes, dad, you didn't tell me about this stuff. And he apologized. And I was like, maybe you want to get the information before you start assuming stuff. A lawyer normally should get evidence before he starts threatening, right? It's pretty funny. And he goes, well, I want to hear like I did in 1998. Not happening. I'd love to be able to jump like I was 33, but I can't do it anymore because of my ACL injuries. Sorry. Okay. 2006, he shows up back in my, ha my, my place. And he is now... Whoops. Man, I'm losing it here. My, my pins are dying here. I have to use a different pen here, sorry. He's 64% in the right ear, and he's 32%, sorry, my pen's messing up. He's 32% in the left ear. And I said, wait, what happened? He goes, I stopped wearing both of my hearing aids. I said, why'd you do that? He said, you said to. I did not. And it goes back and forth. He goes, I want to hear like I did here. Not going to happen. And now because you <coughs> didn't wear something over here in two years, you, this is the best that I can help you. Remember, I said my ceiling is, hit, or his ceiling is 64 and now 32%. He goes, I'll find someone who will. Okay. <clears throat> he walks back in in 2007. And now, 24% <coughs> and 
and 52%. And he goes, I went to two different places in town and I got two different, sorry, I can't even use that anymore. I got two different sets of hearing aids and none of them helped me like I was in 1998. I said, what did I tell you about that before? I'm not that mean, but I'm telling you my inside th thoughts here. What did I tell you about? And he said, well, they couldn't help me. I gave them back. Okay. But I want to come to the expert. Now he's buttering me up. I'm like, stop, okay? The reality is now this is the best we can hope for. That's not good enough. Walks away mad. 2008, he calls on the phone. <clears throat> he first talks to my new front office person, who's got a pretty loud voice. He can't understand her. My physician marketing person, Cheryl, gets on the phone. She's screaming louder. He can't hear her. Talks to me on the phone. I'm blasting as loud as I can go, and there's no way I can communicate. <clears throat> Wrote him a letter. This is a, what we were talking about before. You see, what happens when you don't have sound presented to your ear at an appropriate amount of volume for your hearing, you will lose it. Okay? <clears throat> so, speech understanding in quiet circumstances is a powerful evaluation that we know <coughs> about your mind's ability. <coughs> Excuse me, about your mind's ability in that. So I hope that helped you. Sorry about the cough there. Hope that helps you give an understanding of what's been going on here. Thanks so much.